Hi guys, um, just wanted to thank, um, as everyone has done, um, Wendy for um, this opportunity and uh, everyone here being here still on the third day after lunch, I guess um, that's quite good. So I'm just going to start. I have no, um, no other entertainment than myself. So uh, you need to bear with me. I'm going to go s uh, speak slowly and read slowly. And um, so hopefully you can just follow. Uh, can you hear me? Okay? Yeah, okay. Mediation today is dominated by a new order of automation. Algorithms talk to, to other algorithms before talking to us. They execute extractions without being supervised and take decisions without awareness. As Catherine Hales explains, the automation that drives market, market trading, military, and commercial logistics eludes logical causality. Instrumentality and not logic, procedural operations and not postulates, we are told, determine mediatic functions today. Non-conscious automation, I argue, has radicalized the existing tension in Western culture between philosophy and techne. As technological abstraction questions the very conditions of thinking, the bifurcation between theoretical reasoning and instrumentality falls apart. Theories of mediation, on the one hand, reject instrumentality, but on the other, accept a media ontology grounded precisely in instrumental knowledge. We have heard a lot about this this morning and just the panel before. Um, they've embraced immanence, as discussed by Gilles Dallès, but also Frederick Kittler's technicity of being. But whilst this theory argues for a materialist approach to mediation, the latter, I suggest, requires a processual articulation of practical and theoretical, instrumental and pure reasoning. I draw on Charles Sander Peirce to explain this process through what he calls a triadic architecture of logic. And I suggest that automated intelligence as part of a computational stratum is irreducible to biological and physical terms. I, it cannot be discussed according to uh, biology or physical um, sciences, but needs um, a science of computation itself to be discussed. A materialist account of mediation instead needs to address the order of the stratum composed of information, data, algorithms, procedures and compressions, entropy and randomness. These are internal constraints to computation that define how automated systems may produce knowledge, but also, and that's the challenge, develop a theoretical order. The question thus is, what happens when instruments start theorizing? How does the change, how does this change the critical view of instrumentality? As human thinking becomes dominated by automated activities, what conditions of mediation remain possible? But before delving in this very attractive speculation, I want to discuss first the two main approaches that I see central to the discussion about the conditions of mediation today. So first, Deleuze. In the last 20 years, the materialist critique of representation has argued for a relational ontology, a being of the middle that has radically weakened the dominance of the semiotic and discursive understanding of mediation. In particular, I'm referring to the critique of mediation developed through the work of Gilles Deleuze and, the, and his critique of cognition specifically. Instead of the discursive negotiation between concepts and things, Deleuze insists on a virtual field of relations in which thought and things are equally immersed. This field is the generative source of being, or the intermezzo, as he calls it, or the self-differentiation, 
where the sensible unfolds and forces thought to think. In difference and repetition, Deleuze offers us a radical critique of mediation. Whilst common sense has it that every human can think because they can cognize, thinking for Deleuze is not recognition. And what has already been sized and categorized cannot explain thinking anew. Contrary to the Kantian schema based on this ascending movement from sensible to the intelligible and finally to reasons as judgments, Deleuze's materialism proposes a radicalization of the sensible. He calls it the being of the sensible. So he ontologizes the sensible as an immanent generator of novelty that acts before and thus explain cognitive reasoning. We all know that in the aftermath of post-structuralism, the adaptation of the less anti-representational view of, of uh, digital media, um, in particular, um, has radicalized this understanding of mediation. So the manifold of the sensible becomes the ontological condition that, following the less, gels together all kinds and degrees of being. The immediacy of material reverberations and not the structure of semiotic mediation becomes the condition or the possibility for pure thinking. And that's what the less is about. It's, that's what is after in, the, in this critical cognition, pure thinking. From this standpoint, mediation also means transduction. We are all familiar with this Simondonian concept. And we know how central that has been to critical theory of uh, digital media. Uh, the Simondonian energetic explanation of mediation for which information becomes the manifestation of an impulse springing through the physical, biological, and technical system. As opposed to the philosophical tradition for which concepts mediate the relation between things, Deleuze offers us a practical philosophy where concepts are at one with living matter without belonging to any particular form. For Deleuze, however, thinking is neither theoretical logic nor instrumental practice. Closely inspired by Simon Don, and that's obviously my reading of Deleuze Simon Don because there are other readings with whom I don't agree, we find um, an immanent view of technology as matter in formation. Huh? That's the processual understanding of the less. Matter is information and not technology as a technical operation of encoding and decoding data. There is a virtual continuum between natural and cultural strata, a meta level for the less, okay, which exceeds for him, computational logic, cybernetic mechanisms, and representational frameworks, because they cannot account for something that is very important to the less, i.e. Infinite, infinitesimal self-differentiation, yeah? the level of imperceptible capacity of difference to differentiate itself, an internal generative concept of differentiation which constitute uh, what he also calls the intensity of encounters. So we know self-differentiation and intensity are very important concepts in Deleuze. By suspending the dominance of mathematical logic and algebraic axiomatic in favor of what he calls problematics, contingency, experimentation, technical mediation is plunged within what can be called the biophysical dynamics. And technoculture becomes defined in terms of natural indeterminacy. That's what we have inherited by the use of the less in digital media, I think. But beside this energy-based critique of mediation, Frederick Kittler media ontology is also importantly driven the debate. His theory also presents, like Deleuze, an anti-formal and practically oriented view of mediation. 
but does not evoke the indeterminacy of abstract materialism, as we all know. Instead, he argues for the historical production of instrumental knowledge. Kittler's uh, theorization of media as information system that store, transmit, and command data develops a non-representational view of mediation for which technology is an original dimension of human culture. Not an expression, but an original dimension. The technology incorporated in media systems is neither instrument for cultural expression nor extension of, uh, of sensory, motor, or cognitive functions. So we all know how much it took you know, uh, a tissue, uh, the, the, the view of McLuhan uh, on media. We all know that, fortunately, I mean, importantly did that. The being of techne, instead, is defined by the practical history of systems evolving within systems. Hence, mediation entails the operation of information compression, data encoding, the logical procedures, the algebraic operations, defining the discrete nature of techne. And by techne, it's the technical being. That's what is meant. Importantly, Kittler calls for the withdrawal, not of philosophy or theoretical reasoning, but of the human subject and rational judgment. He invents a materialist method in which formal logic is replaced by practical knowledge embedded in the circuits and processors of machines. This method, uh, and we all know, we have heard Weidegger before, radicalizes the Heideggerian view of techne. What is it? The centrality of crafting in the shaping of thought. Here, techne as a messianic function, as it were, of revealing the finitude of human reason and the delusion or the delusional ends of a platonic project whose rational aim of liberating ideas from the sophist instrumentation of logos has withdrawn thinking from being altogether. But this is a longer history, and we know that the distinction of techne or craft versus philosophy or rational thought, uh, strongly characterizes critical theory mistrust of technology, and until today, of, automated, of an automated world destined to stupidity. And we have heard this this morning. Um, in the Republic, Plato wrote of the Socratic distinction between technical or craft knowledge from philosophical logos and argue that craft knowledge only concerns technical understanding or can be used to define the pursuit of a particular trade or practice. Craft, no, uh, sorry, craft knowledge must be instrumental to something. The water clock, the astronomical array, the mechanical puppet are all primordial automated devices. Uh, that are used to demonstrate or describe something. Techne, therefore, reflects practical understanding and is distinguished from philosophical knowledge, which is rational, of a mathematical uh, order, and requires no instruments. Whilst techne coincides with primitive automata, which are thoughtless and mainly concern practical understanding, philosophical knowledge, this is cl classically traditionally understood, involves the cultivation of the principle of all things and is therefore ideal and timeless. By following Heidegger, Kittler radicalizes the transformation that technology has imposed on human culture and ultimately on thought. If mediation is the embodiment of instrumental use and practical knowledge, the World War II computational turn marked an epochal change in which practical knowledge could finally acquire autonomy. And that's why Hitler is so interesting to me. Uh, he says that very clearly, um, I think. Uh, and very uniquely, still, in uh, media theory. Uh, with the mechanization of logic, reasoning, as, uh, uh, reasoning become, became incorporated in computational procedures allowing the mediatic apparatus 
to develop its own technical language. Whilst arguing for a historical formation of this technical ontology, Kittler reveals the significance of instrumental knowledge as this became rooted in the information processing of the Turing machine. The distinction between theoretical and physical and practical reasoning is here replayed in the distinction between software and hardware. The Turing machine proposed a digital uniformity between data and programs, entailing no physical difference between processor and processed. In the famous essay, There is no software, Kittler shows that the logic, uh, the logic computation uh, is absorbed, the logical computation is absorbed in the practical knowledge of circuits, tapes, microprocessors, and switches. By reversing theoretical into practical thinking, that's possibly that's the, the philosophical operation that I'm trying to understand what it does, or that, it, that it does, okay. So by reversing theoretical into practical thinking, uh, Hitler reveals that the material storage, transmission, and command of information has produced an autonomous system of knowledge derived from the automation of human activities, or, quoting Wiener, from the human use of human beings. Okay, but how can these influential approaches help us to tackle the tension between automation and philosophy, i.e., the ontological autonomy of instrumental knowledge versus the formalism of abstraction? How do these views help us to address the dominance of automated thinking without simply proposing an inverted hierarchy or a flattening of theory and technique, ontology and history? That's my problem. Okay. And why, you may ask, these approaches you think are insufficient to address the computational stratum of media today. To reply to this question, I need to quickly explain the deadlocks of these views, of this, what I think are the dominant views, or at least these shifting views in what we, what we call digital media theory today. Uh, on the one hand, Deleuze's proposition of an immanent thought defies representational structure or cognitive, or cognitive identification in favor of the indeterminate, being of the sensible. Mediation is not defined in terms of instrumental knowledge for Deleuze, but by the primacy of sensation. And that's, we're all familiar with affect theory, that's where it comes from. Uh, the transcendental excarnation from automated or habitual repetition, that instead is, in, is in, as opposed to the unleashing of vibrations in thought. That's what the less real, that's all pure thinking, pure vibration in thought. This platonic trace in the less immanentism thus places uh, philosophy or what the less and Gattari call conceptual persona um, at the living threshold of theory and practice. Concepts are not symbolic ideas for the less, but unfold the energetic formation of ideas. This empirical transcendentalism precisely explains the virtual conditions of thinking in terms of causal indeterminacy found in biological uh, or biophysical conti uh, contingencies. So for the less is the reverberation of thought, and the, the, the capacity for thought to think anew is pushed from below. It's pushed from the vibrational matter. And, you know, we, all, we are all familiar with the amount of work that has been produced uh, in the last 10, 15 years uh, within theories of effect or idea of vibration, vibrating matter. We, we, we know this stuff. We have inherited already very clearly. On the, on the, one, on the other hand, the, uh, Kittler expo espouses the Heideggerian apology for a no longer pure condition of being, mapping the historical decadence of theoretical knowledge driven by the instrumental betrayal of sacred truth. The history of technology no longer allows theoretical thinking to have a privileged role. Kittler indeed envisions that silicon-based binary language 
will soon be replaced by quantum computing, uh, dissipating the limit between philosophy and automation for good. But these materialist approaches have distinct ontological implications. One proposes an immanent production of knowledge embedded in the abstraction of the sensible, while the other offers the historical ontology of technical knowledge. However, the conditions of mediation today are determined by a computational stratum whose capacity to organize and command information exceeds technical knowledge, but also the biophysical order of things. Um, this condition instead crucially involves the algorithmic automation of logic, whose learning skills are challenging the classical view of formal and universal language. This also means that algorithmic forecasting operates independently from biophysical organization, probability and chance. I, we cannot understand forecasting, computational forecasting, by extending biological understanding of, uh, of noise, entropy, or probability or chance just coming from biology. We cannot do that because it's a different stratum. And, uh, and that's in the, in, for the sake of a, of a sane universalism. But I will tell you a bit later. So, well. um, to unpack computational forecasting, we then need to address the historical development, not of techne, but of the logic of techne, i.e. the computational abstraction of randomness. The materialist critique of media as import importantly rebrings, therefore, to the surface this tension between thinking and automation beyond biophysical substrates of being. Nevertheless, materialist approaches seem to overlook the scientific image of thought, and I borrow this idea from Wilfred Sellers, American pragmatist, which importantly finds in the mechanization of logic, uh, now instantiated in machine learning, an opportunity to individuate how technological abstraction has internally challenged the deductive logic of formal listening. So my point is, that there is a challenge, the computational reason, uh, automation, by developing certain methods of reasoning as already posed to the classical understanding of formal reasoning in classic uh, uh, philosophy, i.e. based on formal reasoning and um, uh, theoretical uh, reasoning only. But it will become clear, I hope, in a sec. Um, since the Turing machine uh, the condition of media can no longer exist beyond computational abstraction, a mediatic condi a condition overlooked by the critique of automated culture appealing to the non-conscious or irrational nature of instrumental knowledge. Instead, the consequences of the historical realization of uh, logical thinking in automated systems has yet to be unpacked, and not many people want to go close to it. A materialist account of media needs to construct a non-representational, processual philosophy of computation that refuses any quick dismissal of logic, reason, or formal thought, or just think that, as Heidegger, and also, this is also Kittler, Inheritance of Heidegger, that um, formal thought has uh, come to an end. Mm. It is thus important with, with automation. Yeah? And that's the critique that we hear constantly, the kind of critical theory of technology. That's uh, my target. Um, <laughs> it is thus important to explain um, not simply the instrumental ground of algorithmic functions, but the general functioning of an automated logic. So the general functioning of an automated logic. I, the patterning on non-inferential information from within computational processing in order to account for an ontology of computation that is not just some kind of uh, universal extension of what natural law already do in physics and biology. In particular, the question of the limit of computation, the incomputable in the universal Turing machine, 
is for me the starting point for developing a critical theory of automation, which could account for the concretization of logical thinking and the abstraction of material information. A materialist approach to automation shall thus, ad shall, uh, thus address the problem of the limit of computation in information theory to explain the use of randomness in the forecasting of probabilities that our automated system um, uh, bring about today. The incomputable has also been understood in terms of randomness and discussed uh, in terms of the limits of reason. In, 90, in the 1980s, information theorist Gregory Chaitin addressed the limit of computational logic from the standpoint of an entropic conception of information, intended as incompressible amounts of information. For Chaitin, computation corresponds to the algorithmic compression of maximally unknowable quantities of information or maximal unknowable probabilities. An information process in which the disequilibrium between input and output shows the limits of formal logic. Increasing quantity of information, also called algorithmic randomness, demarcate the point at which computation fails, the famous halting, uh, halting problem, halting problem, as it stretches the logical procedure through which it was programmed and enters the randomness of informational substrates. Because of the tendency of information to increase in size, in volumes and quantities within a system, algorithmic programming becomes the result of emerging patterns. The mechani this mechanization of logic in computational processing thus expose the limits of formal logic. A precisely of logical deduction whose rules of truth universally bounded all kind of information. I, I can explain a bit more about uh, deductive logic, but I hope it comes uh, clear in a sec. Uh, instead, for chatting, uh, computational processing breaks from deductive logic and importantly sets in place the incomputable condition for prediction increasing randomness in the system. Forecasting in computation depends not on given instruction leading to set probabilities. Instead, this form of statistical computation explains how incomputables are central to the evolution of algorithmic patterns. This corresponds to an experimental method of prediction, whereby algorithmic order is not opposed to, but depends upon infinite varieties of unknowns. Chaitin calls these computational dynamics experimental axiomatics. Here, postulates, eh, axiomatic truths, are result of the algorithmic compression of incomputables into patterns. Mediation here involves an algorithmic form of intelligibility which grows uh, patterns from within information em environments, undermining or confirming existing axiom rules and truths. So it's an experimental process of defining truth, as it were, um, as it were from the compression of information, rather than having rules and then compress information. In other words, with algorithmic information theory, we can suggest that if axioms are becoming experimental truths, that is, if laws are the result of an algorithmic intelligibility of information environments, then forecasting too may involve the process by which incomputables be become or come to be algorithmically prended, so prended from within automation itself. But how to explain this non-deductive method without simply affirming lawless, um, sorry, without simply affirming that lawless randomness disqualify computational logic? Yeah, the problem of what comes first and what becomes the principle, uh, the ontological principle, is a, is a question here. Um, 
I think that the sublimation, so how to address this computational forecasting of unknowns without simply relinquishing logic in the name of contingency, randomness. I think that the sublimation, sublimation of indeterminacy, the sublimation of incomputable, and randomness, which is also another level of intervention in digital theory, um, often reflected in critical theory, claims that automation perpetuates irrationality and stupidity, risks missing the fundamental epistemological shift of mechanization of logic. Ah, yeah, yeah. The, um, the, la <laughs> uh, the latter, I suggest, importantly shows that the condition of mediation involves a new articulation of the relation between order and randomness in the iterative evolution of information, which challenges some kind of safe distinction between theoretical and practical reasoning. In other words, the rise um, I'm sorry, I'll start last night. In other words, the rise of computational automata defines not the end of logic or the merging of logic and techne in instrumental knowledge, but the realization that automation requires a continuous patterning of information, the evolution of an algorithmic intelligibility of randomness, i.e. the compression, which is experimental, Experimenting, exactly. Oh, already. Oh, I have a lot to say. Sorry, I have to speed up. Experimenting with the conceptual infrastructure of truth. More precisely, this involves an integrated function of labeling, selecting, evaluating, and commanding information, which increasing the skills of automated system to incorporate social, economic, cultural practices within their vast parallel distributed level of iteration. So one can suggest that the automation of these practices amounts to a veritable computational stratification of discursive and non-discursive thinking. It is no longer possible to ignore the new order of intelligibility activated by these iterative compressions of randomness. Uh, the critique of techno-capitalist dominance of affective and unconscious irrational thinking seems to overshadow the artificial evolution of logical reasoning within computa computation and its experimental truth by simply merging logic and techne. While, whilst acknowledging that the crisis of deductive logic and formal reasoning in computation has led to a critical reinvestment in instrumental knowledge, the logical reasoning of automated system needs to be addressed. Charles Sander Peirce's pragmatist conception of logic offers us a possible perspective here. His efforts to, the, to define continuity between practical and theoretical knowledge resulted in the formulation of a triadic system of logic, what he called abductive, inductive, deductive, inferential reasoning. His views did not reject but extended the Kantian model of deductive reasoning and the transcendental function of the conceptual mediation for the prediction of truth. For Peirce, the logical structure of reasoning are embedded in material and non-inferential strata, but are not of the same order. Here, prediction is central to reasoning and involves this processual continuity between different orders of mediation, material, semiotic, logical. In short, Peirce develops a materialist account of logic, the process by which hypothetical reasoning moves from non-inferential materialities to the articulation of discursive practice and to truth. Prediction is not simply a translation between objects and concepts involving some kind of energetic transduction or code mutation. Instead, thinking itself involves prediction or hypothesis to the best explanation of things, exposing rather than imposing the conceptual infrastructure embedded within things. So um, the conceptual layers of things are, as it were, extrapolated by what he calls abduction, an hypothetical thinking tracking truth retroactively. 
Prediction, therefore, is possible because hypothesis generates truth from physical and conceptual apprehension of the material layering of things. This involves the material layers are the logic of decision because it is where information is extrapolated through a series of theoretical hypotheses that can be put to test and unfold the discursive practices and then construct <coughs> systems of, of inferences. So in other words, prediction is not without conception, but concepts are, as it were, retroactivated from the material layers of information and evolution of inferential reasoning from non-inferential practices. So the, the conceptual infrastructure of things, from far from being directly accessible or innate within things, rather needs to be made explicit. It needs to be articulated through a series of logical methods, starting with hypotheses that are able to explain and transform truth according to material constraints. Axiom thus become auto-generated rules because of the experimental processing that allows hypotheses to unfold the iterative loops of materialities where randomness becomes interior to truth. So random is not other than truth, it's internal to truth. This dynamic logic admits that the attainment of truth is dependent on the function of reason, but reasoning implies the mediating activities of universal science, material discursive logical, where hypotheses serve to revise or confirm truth. And now I need to jump because I have two minutes. So, uh, abduction, therefore, is not transduction. It privileges not the indeterminacy of causality, but the retroactive tracking of cause and its consequential truths. Transductive mediation admits an ontological condition of energetic influx, cutting across biological, physical, technical strata a sort of monistic multiplicity in an invariant continuum of differences. Instead, abduction entails the process by which the limit of formal reasoning, or the incomputable in algorithmic information terms, becomes the point at which non-inferential practices, i.e. material activities, practices, do not guarantee equivalence across scales but are embedded in the elaboration of information into patterns and patterns into rules, exposing some kind of multi universe of order. In other words, abduction starts from collective non-inferential practices, but then ends up articulated bounded patterns whose increasing skills in evolving new levels of order from randomness results in the establishment of rules. So, Pierce's triadic logic challenges both cognitivist and affective model of thinking. It offers a materialist rearticulation of logic and explains the relation between thoughts and things in terms of a multiscalar order of mediation, where randomness becomes in internal to the iterative loop of uh, information. The question is, what layering of randomness is occurring at what level of computation? That's the research that has to be done. So my proposition is just an attempt to argue for the process by which the instrumental knowledge embedded in automated system does not preclude that algorithmic pattern can exceed their practical functions. My point is that these functions do not simply accomplish tasks, but grow hypotheses about unknown layers of information and thus crucially mediate the technological abstraction of inferential reasoning. This would mean not the end of philosophy, uh, done, as warned by Hitler, um, uh, this means that the end of philosophy, uh, as warned by Hitler, coincides not with the dystopic triumph of technical logic uh, or technical uh, knowledge at the fallacy of theory, but with the effort to construct a general artificial reasoning. And that's the project of extended Kantian model of logic through Peirce, for which practical knowledge incorporates a conceptual infrastructure that algorithmic mediation is contributing to unpack and to evolve. 
Um, so mediation here involves a speculative forecasting of unknowns insofar as the hypothetical causality within logic requires a continuity between practical and theoretical reasoning. Thank you.